Hi everyone! Today I am going to explain a little bit how I color pages of Lizzie Mary Cullen where we have a lot of various objects and which are not very easy to understand. I decided to color this page dedicated to root 66 and usually when I color in Lizzie Mary Cullen's book and especially in Magical Journey, I start from Googling. In Google, I try to learn to find reference pictures and a little bit of info about place which I decided to color. For example, here I learned that Route 66 is one of the oldest roads in the USA and its so-called Mother Road of America and it begins in Chicago, so from Illinois it goes through Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona and the road ends in Santa Monica in Los Angeles, California. Google supplied me with a lot of reference pictures about places which we can find along the road and I immediately started to recognize some of the places which Lizzie Mary Cullen put on her paintings. And such reference pictures always give me initial idea of color. Now I can clearly see that we have four separate places here. I decided to start from the upper right corner and to do here a bright blue sky because here we have a LA sign and I decided that near LA we definitely will have very bright clear day so I decided that bright blue will be nice as a basic color. With bright blue I did only initial layer of sky. Later I plan to add maybe pink or pale blue clouds and that's why I left part of the sky uncolored and for the rest of the sky area I tried to vary pressure on the bright blue pencil in order to get different variations of colors from one pencil. In the darkest areas near edges I put also iron blue, because I already decided that in the right bottom area I want to do darker sky, so in order to make smooth transition between daylight picture in the upper corner and evening or even night picture in the bottom right corner, I need to use this iron blue as a transition dark color. Then I decided that for the color of the road I want to use paints gray. I am not very fond of intense paints gray color. It very pale and I think that something is wrong with my pencil. It doesn't want to give color away and it's always scratchy. But still it's the best gray color from intense set so paints gray will be main color but also I will be using dark indigo for shading and again I will be varying pressure on the pencils near the sides of the road I put darker color and also I did shading so and put darker color in the area where a road is intersected and make a loop. For the area in the right bottom corner I again was inspired by pictures and very often we can find pictures of orange landscapes during evening or during dusk time with beautiful mauve, violet, magenta colors of the sky so I decided to apply these colors violet and mauve for the sky and different shades of orange for the ground. 
In the right bottom corner we have terrain near mountains and Lizzie Mary Cullen depicted it with horizontal lines. I wanted to show it as a land with small hills, so I used two shades of orange. I put a red oxide in the bottom part of each line, each imaginary hill, and slightly lighter burnt orange in the upper part. But to do everything with just orange, I decided it will be boring, so I added yellow-green color. I selected light olive. And the same light olive I will be using in a couple of other places on the same page, like I already colored grass in the upper right part of the page. I will try to repeat as much colors as possible through this page and it will be another challenge for me how much times I will be able to repeat and to use the same pencils. When I finished to color main details on the right side of the page, it gave me a basic set of pencils, basic set of colors, which now I will try to use also for the left part. For example, for the area behind the flag, I again used same colors which I used for the night sky, mauve and violet, and I added also a little bit of iron blue. For the area on the flag I used the same blue color which I previously used for the sky, but as flag as uh, one of the most important details of the page, I also used unique hot red to indicate and to add brightness. I won't be using this red in any other part of the page and in this way unique color will have help to show that USA flag is an important focal point of the page. Now when I am more proficient in coloring in Lizzie Mary Cullen's book, I started to use inktense in more artistic way. I will try to explain. I try to use the same pencil but to vary co pressure on it and in this way I got beautiful color gradient in one object like I do for the road for example and I got nice shadow and highlighted areas. When I was a beginner I colored everything with just one pressure and picture looked more flat and now I definitely prefer to have shadow areas and highlighted areas and it helps me to get depth for my page. Also, it's very important how you apply water to your ink tents. Now, I prefer to use regular brushes and in the beginning I preferred to use water brushes. Now I add more water and even if it's more dangerous to apply more water because paper is not that thick, but it helps me to give a push to ink tense pigment and it flows more freely and I got more beautiful color gradients. When I color with water brush, it gives me a better control of the pigment and it's also easier to color when you have to color small details. But if you need to color bigger areas and to create this color gradient from light to dark shade of the same color, I definitely prefer now to use regular brushes. But you have to practice in order to get the right amount of water and not to ruin the page on the back. I always try to apply water first from the lightest area and then I push pigment to the darker area with my brush. If I need to color area with contrast colors, like area where I have stripes of orange and green colors, I have to be very attentive. You probably know that if you mix green and orange, you will get something very dirty like brown, not very attractive color. 
so I prefer to apply water to green areas. Then I let it dry for a minute. And only after that I clean my brush and I go to orange areas. Because of ink intense pigment is permanent, green areas are already dry and pigment won't be mixing with orange pigment and I will get nice clean orange and green lines. When I need to color something with very light, pale color, I very often left this area uncolored, like I did with the middle part of the road or area of the night sky in the bottom part. And then, when I applied water to the sides of the road or for the upper part of the sky, I have a reminding pigment on my brush, so I push it toward this uncolored area. On my brush I have water and only a little bit of remaining pigment, and that's why that's helped me to get a very pale color in the area which I want to be very light. And the next thing which I wanted, maybe the last thing for this part, is when I need to color something with cl close colors. Look at the swirls in the left upper part. I decided to color them in violet and sisal colors, the same colors which I used for the night sky. Swirls are quite small, sisal and violet are very close colors, so there is a risk to mix colors together and as pigment is very intense you can simply lost this difference between colors and spheres will look flat like colored in just one color in such cases it's very important to wipe with paper towel excessive pigment between colors like I started to apply water to the thistle area, then I wipe my brush with paper towel and only after that I touch my brush to the violet area. Well, I realize that my explanations sound a little bit silly, crazy, but it's small details which really help me to color and to get better result in Lizzie Mary Collins book when I work with intense pencils. I hope that some of my advice will be helpful for you also and I hope to see you in the second part.